Hello, I'm uh, Michael Lambert, a fellow in social inequalities at Lancaster University. And today I'm speaking as part of our researching inequalities, uh, inequalities series, uh, trying to understand the work and research that's done by members of the centre. So can I begin by asking, uh, who are you? Uh, who am I speaking with? So my name is Yadviga Lee and I'm a senior lecturer at Lancaster University. But I'm also the chief executive officer for a charity in Stockport called New Beginnings. Um, what is it that you do? So I have two roles because obviously I'm a senior lecturer at Lancaster, um, but my hours have been reduced at Lancaster. So I now um, only work part time basis. Um, and the reason for that is because I work full time or the majority of my time is spent on New Beginnings, which is a charity that I founded in 2018 following my own um, doctoral research. Um, the findings from that research um, encouraged me to set up this charity and it began as a very small enterprise um, in 2018 in partnership with Stockport Local Authority and now it has become a bona fide charity that uh, has a team um, and works really closely with families in the child protection system. And how do you do? what you do? I mean, there's an enormous series of responsibilities and roles that you do there. How, how do you go about um, managing uh, all of those and so undertaking the research as well? That's a really good question because, yes, I have a study. I <laughs> we received funding from the British Academy to find out why New Beginnings works. Um, and that is rumbling away in the in the background. And um, OK, I've thought about this. Why? Am I in this situation and how have we managed to make new beginnings work? And I honestly do think that being one, a social worker. So I used to be a statutory social worker. I uh, was a practitioner before I became an academic and I did my PhD and I worked for a university and I taught social work students and I was part of research projects and I wrote about um, the findings from those research projects. But all of that together has enabled me to develop a skill set that I can now use effectively on new beginnings. I had to have that history, that trajectory to get to where I am now, because where I am now is a person who's taken seriously by a local authority. So there's lots of rhetoric around working in partnership with parents and local authorities say that they're doing that. And I think they honestly believe that they are, but they're not. Um, and fortunately, Stockport allowed us in. And we are now in a position where we work intensively with parents who find themselves in the child protection system, who are at risk of having their children removed into care. We've developed a programme that helps parents see how their childhood has impacted on who they are as parents. We work very closely with them on a one-to-one -one basis um, so that we tailor the programme to their needs and their children's needs, whilst not ignoring the concerns of social workers. Um, and of course, what we've learned is all the parents that are referred to us are not in a child protection system for no reason. There are genuine concerns that can't be ignored. But sometimes the way that those concerns are responded to by the social workers are not helpful. And this is where disparity occurs and discrepancy. And I always call it the invisible rule book. Parents work blind in a system that they do not know the rules to. So something else that we do is we advocate for parents. We tell them the rules. We make them explicit. We represent them in um, child protection meetings, core group meetings. We're not their voice. We're with them when they're not expressing themselves in the way that we know they want to express themselves. We help them do that. Um, but then it goes the other way too, when they're not hearing the concerns of social workers, we'll translate those concerns so that they can hear them. So they're aware of the test, the hidden test that they may be taking part in that they didn't know that they were involved in. Um, and our main aim is to keep families together and families know that. So when they become involved with us, well, they've got an advocate. They know someone's rooting for them, not just them, but their children too. Um, and what then that also means is that we build good relationships with our families, but because we don't isolate um, social workers, we involve them on 
in the journey and we also challenge social workers and they challenge us too. And we have critical conversations where people are able to express concerns and views and we listen. We've developed a good connection with Stockport. We're valued, we're cherished, we're respected. I say it's been bumpy. We've made some calls that they do not like, but they've heard those calls and they've responded to them. And as a result, we've changed the pathways for where families were going and um, helped keep families together. Um, and I don't think any of that would have happened if I hadn't had all the grounding work that I've just told you about. Um, and that's why we're in this position now. Um, Me, that, that narrative that you just provided is just a phenomenal way of trying to capture the, the broader sort of ethos of the centre to think uh, globally, but act locally about inequalities. And the way that you're describing it is to say the two are connected in a sense that your background in research, in practice, about the kind of quality of research and work that you've done grounds you and equips you to be able to make meaningful systemic changes rather than just being um, something that's um, neither use nor ornament uh, in a very nicely and, and documented report that kind of sits and, and gathers dust, the kind of thing that me as a historian of social work will pick up 50 years later. So it's that applied, practical, meaningful dimension that I think is the real um, contribution of, of your work in, in transforming and changing people's lives in a very tangible sense. That's really nicely said. I wish I could have said it that way myself, but that is bang on. But the other thing is as well, whilst I really value research, and I do, and I use it, and it's helped us transform this project from just a project that works with parents into being something quite um, amazing is because we're always reading research and we're using it in an authentic way and we challenge the research that we read and contribute to because obviously we are doing a study and we are uh, creating our own evidence base but what really resonated for me was the opportunity that impact can have you're right it's not just writing and researching but putting it into practice and that for me is what's great about academia and that it can enable you to do that when you do it meaningfully and this is why I love Lancaster that's created this centre that has given me the opportunity to go, OK, I'm no longer valuable as an uh, academic in this setting. I will be more valuable over there, creating impact um, and feeding that back into the university, which has gone, you're right, you are more valuable over there. Go find that knowledge and bring it back into this setting so we can learn from it as well. And that there is what research and impact should be about, uh, addressing inequalities in that way. So that neatly dovetails into my next question. I know you sort of spoken about it uh, already, but can I ask just to you to give me uh, an example of how your, your work and activities intersect with this uh, ideas uh, of inequality? So, well, one, the majority of parents that we work with are marginalised because they're in the child protection system. So they're stigmatised. When you see all the Christmas adverts coming on the TV for charities asking for sponsorship, you won't see a child protection family up there or a charity saying, please give to these families because the way they're viewed by society, there's no better way of seeing that than at this current time with the recent case of Arthur Libigno. Um, You would not get funding for the families that I work with. So they are at a significant disadvantage. Furthermore, what I've also learned is that the majority are working class, um, are from lower socioeconomic backgrounds, um, and have also, and this is the biggest finding, which I think is a hidden finding that has become massive in our work, is that the majority of parents we work with have an unidentified learning need. So when we ask them at the initial meeting, do you have a learning need? They'll say they don't because they've never been given a label of one, but they've all left school at the age of 14, 15 with no qualifications. They may seem like they understand what's going on, but cognitively there is a disadvantage because they haven't had the same access to education as other parents do. Um, who are not in the child protection system. And that means that all these invisible rules, they don't realise are uh, 
is information that they don't understand how to access or compute and I think contributes to the cycle of coming back into the system. Um, and there's a further disadvantage then is educationally, they haven't had the same opportunities as other children or adults. My thing's really um, interesting about the way you just described it in trying to build the, the research into practice is the way that I know that there's a lot of substantial academic literature about these kinds of issues and the way that child protection practitioners operate um, in the United States and Australia and New Zealand, but relatively in the United Kingdom is quite narrow and trying to realise that that's kind of like you say, the, the hidden curriculum, the hidden background to all of this is, is incredibly important and the way that you can bring that both to light, but also in a transformative kind of way, I, I think is phenomenal from the point of view of uh, trying to reduce and change inequalities. So can I finish by asking beyond uh, New Beginnings and your work with Stockport Local Authority. Are there any other organisations, partners or stakeholders that you work um, alongside or with as part of your, your research and your activities? Yes, we work with um, another two charities really closely. Uh, There's Pure Insight that I have to give a big shout out to, um, who work with um, look, former looked after children. Um, and our paths cross because we um, often have those when those uh, that service user group have children well they end up in the child protection system and we share knowledge and we share ideas and they train us and they've helped develop us they've been around for a very long time so I have to have a big shout out to them um, and then there's also um, Society Inc which is a peer mentoring um, charity and they do our peer mentoring training so once the parents finish on new beginnings they go on to do peer mentoring training. So they stay with us and facilitate the groups that we run. This is a way of helping them stay connected to us. We call it, you know, it's a new beginnings family that helps keep them out of the system. Um, and so we work really closely with that charity. So it's really lovely to have charities nearby with a shared interest. There's Love Barrow, that's from your area as well. Yeah. It's about the dynamic maturational model, which is a really lovely attachment model um, that teaches us how parents can use childhood um, coping mechanisms to navigate parenting. So there are those uh, charities that we work closely with, but we also inform, um, oh, there's PFAN as well that we our peer mentors contribute to. So that's a parents family alliance network. And that's really good for our peer mentors to be involved with. But we also contribute to different reviews that are going on, such as a care review, um, yeah. We've talked to Josh McAllister, to Isabel Trowler. Um, and we also are part of the um, Family Court Education Training Committee for Manchester, which is brilliant. So that is the Family Court ask us to be part of developing their suite of training to their um, solicitors and barristers and judges. So that's our parents going back into the courtroom and talking to them about um, well, this is my experience and this is what needs to be changed. This is what needs to change. Um, and that's really helpful as well. I think that's <laughs> people. There may be more that I've missed, but those are the people that I tend to have the most contact with. Definitely. No, I mean, it's an incredible uh, list of the way that it's very uh, embedded as well. And it's kind of an ongoing uh, process rather than sort of a smash and grab, so to speak. And that's fantastic both to see and uh, kind of hear that, that you've been a part of. So can I just finish by saying thanks very much for taking the time to talk with me today about your research and activities and their relationship to inequalities. Thank you.